are Carolina Capital Management, and we are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you want to borrow money, go to carolinahardmoney.com, click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, go to the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, and don't forget <laughs> to sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. Wendy does a wonderful job <laughs> of giving back to the investor community. She gives up 30 minutes of her time per person on Wednesdays. Uh, there's the link to get on her calendar. She's booked up a couple of months in advance typically. So she will talk to you about anything real estate related. I would ask her uh, about short-term rentals since no one knows anything about that's that. My, that's my side gig. So I actually just checked it before we came in here. January 12th has some openings left. January 12th. Mm -hmm. Anything particular? Is that a national something day? <laughs> it's a national talk to Wendy today. <laughs> <laughs> today is national men make dinner day. But we're not going to talk about food. I feel like they're reaching with that let's, one. Yeah. Let's talk about food. Well, I'd love for men to make dinner. We were talking about that and I thought that was really interesting. You said you, you love to cook because you like the start and the finish, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like, to, I like to so often with, with a lot of what we do, it takes, you know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may be for things to come to uh, fruition. And then in the, in the, in the kitchen, I can do it in just a couple hours or less. That's right. <laughs> Man, feels good. That's right. A couple right. of hours. Well, he's, Microwave. he's, he's a Mr. Chef. <laughs> I'm not a baker. Uh, I do love to cook uh, mainly with fire. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's a good baker though. Yes, she is. My husband is a great cook when I can get him to get in the kitchen and do it. He's a great cook. He makes a terrible mess when he does. See, so I know thing. I'm up for cleaning. I love cooking. I hate doing dishes. Yeah. Well, that, that part I'll do my nice. part. I don't so mind. If it were up to me, everyone would have plastic forks and paper plates. <laughs> have you been to my house? <laughs> oh man. So we were, um, both, all three of us were recently at a couple of different masterminds. Uh, Wendy went to, uh, the power, power room. room. It's out in uh, Salt Lake. Most of the time, mm -hmm. uh, but it is on the West coast most of the time. And then uh, Jonathan and I were at uh, most recent freedom founders. And we thought we would highlight some of the uh, stuff that actually uh, were highlights for us. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, when do you, you want to kind of let everybody know what, the power room is as a mastermind. Right. So uh, Eddie Wilson is probably the one that I know the most. That's one of the uh, facilitators slash leaders that, that got it up and running. Andrew Cordell um, is another that runs the show. He has a great podcast too called money is mm -hmm. really good stuff. He's a little into tennis shoes. Oh, he's very much <laughs> so funny. Cause Eddie walks in, you know, he's in his three piece suit. He's, you know, Mr. Businessman mm -hmm. uh, of the century and smart as a whip and as humble as American pie. That guy, he's, he, I just love him to death. He, he's a really cool guy. And then Andrew comes in, love him to death too, but he comes in and he is, you know, got what, 400 pairs of tennis shoes and, 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 you know, he's just dressed to the nines. Like, you know, he just got out of a, uh, rapping studio in LA, <laughs> you know, oh, and it, it's so funny that the two of them are so opposite and, and, uh, the way that they look, both of them are incredibly smart. There's some other people that are involved in it as well. Aaron Chapman, who is probably the best, uh, mortgage broker in the nation. It's amazing what that guy does. Uh, extremely, investors, extremely yeah. raw in, in his uh, presentation. <laughs> I mean, this guy has a beard that's braided and comes down to here. It's he, really, <laughs> yeah, he's been a guest on our show. Yeah. Probably. And he, he's a great guy. My goodness. He, he is uh, just amazing with what, what he does. He has a good podcast too, um, that he's doing. 
but um, the room was made up of not only real estate investors, but some tech investors, uh, startup tech investors, um, stuff that we don't usually get to touch or learn about or yeah, see. Books. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, um, it opened my eyes to a lot. I'm, I'm, you know, I like what I know. I like hanging in with what I know, <laughs> investing in what I know. I know real yeah. estate and I'm really, I feel safe there. Um, and they made me personally start to think outside the box mm -hmm. with um, the blockchain and some of the new startup app, small app, phone app companies and things like that. And the way that it works, I had to explain it to me what blockchain even was. And I still couldn't tell you. Um, I just know it has a lot to do with a bunch of computers all working on one thing. So it's really hard for you to get hacked into because there's a multitude of computers right. that have one little piece. So nobody can go in and take one. And I think it's the future of title work. I, well, I think I it's the future of a lot of things yeah. and that's yeah, but because of what it does, I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's making a difference in the way that we will do business in the future. There's no doubt about it. But, um, listening to them talk made me not so fearful of the unknown for me because mm -hmm. I, I've always been kind of afraid of anything other than real estate um, because I know real estate. Yeah. So uh, that was really, really, really interesting. And there were people in there uh, in that room that, um, you know, I met this guy that does nothing but Facebook leads. He shows you how to market on Facebook to get leads. And he's, I mean, he's really successful in what, what he's been able to do marketing for other people. Um, it was just, it was a very different uh, group of people, very professional, small group too. I mean, there were probably maybe 55, 60 people in, okay. in the whole event, which more, was, you know, nice. was nice. Yeah. yeah. You can get to know yeah. everybody. Yeah. Because the, you know, the ones we're going to now are so big, it's kind of hard to get to know everybody. They started out small, but mm -hmm. they ended up growing so, so much because they're so good. So it, it was really, really good. And I'm, I, I'm even going to the next one, which is in Las Vegas. I hate Las Vegas. I hate that town. I hate it. <laughs> and I'm going just because I want to go to that group. So I'll have to work my way through it and go well, to the next one. When, when I was at uh, power room, uh, the previous meeting, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the guest speakers were YouTube influencers. Mm -hmm, very much. And they were in, um, you know, in different aspects of what they were doing. One guy was a um, kind of a motivational personal trainer. Mm -hmm. um, there was another one that, you know, and I can't remember what, what his YouTube channel was about because I was so focused on the fact that he has all these sponsors and he's selling products on there. Uh, once you get to a certain level of uh, subscribers and views on your, on your YouTube channel, all of a sudden people want you to advertise their stuff. Right. Right. And they pay you a buttload of money to do it. Um, <laughs> How much? A buttload. <laughs> so um, for me with uh, freedom founders and I'm kind of dovetailing into this or segueing as it were, mm -hmm. um, what, what got to me or what stood out to me the most was um, finding ways of disrupting your industry hmm. and, and blockchain is one of those disruptors right. for the real estate industry. Zillow was a disruptor. Mm -hmm. Now they're disrupted the right out of yeah, business. The buyer, yeah. <laughs> the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. And then, so there was a speaker, his name was Stuart. I hate getting old. Um, I can't remember Stewart's last name. However, mm -hmm. he's a, a real estate guy in, in Texas, but he has offices um, all over the country. And what they're focusing on is not necessarily the asset, meaning the house. They're focusing in on the transaction, hmm. making money on all parts of the transaction. You mean as the real estate agent, as the title company, as, as all those the things, insurance and, provider, and doing it all with online, no interact, like all online, no face to face interaction. Mm. Yes, they said. How, well, how they do you keep that identity straight? Well, well, the thing about it is, you can use DocuSign and different types of yeah. um, 
e-sign stuff. You use Zoom, the blockchain. Zoom notaries, the, you know, yeah. all that stuff. Hmm. But but they, they said, what was it? Sometime in December, they were going to be 100% everything online. Yeah, they sell. That's amazing. Buy and sell thousands of houses. They never actually personally meet anybody. And never I don't go think to you any can closing. sign a deed online. I don't think that all states allow that to well, be able to. Whatever states they're in, they're okay. able to do it. Well, huh. yeah, I mean, you, yeah. If you, so on a, like on a <laughs> Zoom notary, like, or, or just, no, I'm not plugging Zoom, it's just whatever way you yeah. look at people live. Right, right. Um, but yeah, you can, you can get it notarized. I mean, we're, we're closing a loan tomorrow. And that's exactly how they're doing it. They're citing the deed of trust. Everything is done in front of a Zoom. In front of a Zoom notary. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, again, they're focusing more on the transaction than they are on the actual asset. So there's a way to make money in this business without actually owning, buying, or selling a piece of property. Just being the person who conducts the transaction. Just being that yeah. third party that uh, coordinates the transaction, you know, with it, you know, being, you know, was it men cooking dinner day or something? <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're handling the transaction soup to nuts as it were. <laughs> that was good. good. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. I'm impressed. So you need to think of ways in your <clears throat> everyday businesses of, of ways that you could change your industry, disrupt that industry. And you got to really think outside the box about yeah. that. And, one of the ways to do that is to be in mastermind groups where you can get ideas from other people outside yeah, of that. That's right. Um, most of your, you know, big giants, uh, companies or, um, yeah. internet type companies like a Zillow. Yeah. Um, you know, it was just an idea. Well, I was going to say, you know, one of the best ways that you can disrupt your industry, let's just say it's real estate. You can go and pay more for a house then it's worth and then whatever one everyone else is bidding on it and you can really disrupt the industry <laughs> I'm, but th that's probably an original idea probably so, no one's done that <laughs> then you can so get stuck with it and sell it at a loss fire one two, fourth of two your thousand employees <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and go oops did i do that <laughs> We're discussing Zillow. If you don't already get that. It's, listen, it's not hurting them much. They had tons of cash that were available. Um, what, what I find disrupting is that uh, websites like Zillow and realtor.com and Redfin, none of those would even exist if it wasn't for the uh, National Association of Realtors and that's allowing them to get access to all their multiple listings, exactly which right. by the way, all the realtors pay, have to pay monthly dues to mm -hmm. have access to it. Mm -hmm. And they're selling it to these people that are uh, turning out to be realtors themselves and taking the business from. That's them. right. That's mm -hmm. right. I, I, I just don't get it. Not a smart way to go. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, we talked about the blockchain and, and that, but I mean, I think, as, as it's moving forward, it's already happening. We're seeing how the the whole transaction from finding, um, acquiring, closing, and servicing everything in real estate mm -hmm. can be done online and and utilize you know and utilizing blockchain technology. Like we said, you can use it for title companies or um, essentially as the escrow. You know things get uploaded from one party side, money gets wired from another party side. When all the boxes are checked, it switches. Yeah. yeah that's the beauty of blockchain. Yeah. yeah. It's really, it's really, really interesting. The, the way that it's set up and you know, the more people that are in the blockchain, the more safe it is. Sure. Apparently. Um, and they are even, this is what I, I learned that I thought was really cool. You know, all these games on your phone, uh, there's a bank called Chime now that's yeah. like PayPal and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, there's some others that, that he mentioned too. So one of the guys that was speaking is like the king of blockchain. Yeah. And, and he's taking all of these phone apps um, and 
introducing them to blockchain, but they're, they're paying kids to play games on the phone. Like mm -hmm. when you get in there and play, you can earn money yep. from that. Mm -hmm. Like crazy real, yeah. real money. Yeah. So it's, you know, just like the government paying people to take the vaccine. <laughs> I was, where, where was I? I was somewhere and it was like, where, where was I talking to you? But it, it, they were saying like, yeah, if you want to get uh, your antibody tested to see if you have antibodies, that's now 200 and some dollars to get that tested. I was like, oh, wow. The, you, you have to pay $200 to see if you have the antibodies, but they'll pay you to, to take the, the vaccine. <laughs> like, that's interesting. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. It, but it's the more people that are on there, you know, the, the, the safer it is. So they're paying people now to even kids and they've, they've got, you know, you've probably seen the new, uh, banking system that's online. That's for kids. That's mm -hmm. teaching kids how to save and that kind of thing. All of that's wrapped up in that blockchain. Well, and two things, saving money at a, at a, at a, at a bank only benefits one party and it's not you. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an, I mean, yeah, not, save not money. currently. Yeah. <laughs> save money. Sure. You know, but, investing money, building your wealth is the way to do it. Like just locking your money up at a bank that is giving you 0.25% interest if that on much. it while they're taking your money and lending it out and arbitraging a massive difference between mm -hmm. the two. Mm -hmm. It only benefits the bank. It That's doesn't right. benefit you. That's right. Um, the second piece is I really want someone to get on here and explain to me, like, I love blockchain. Blockchain is like fantastic. What I can't understand is all these people who are saying like cryptocurrency is going to be the next or is the, is the, is the next step. Cause I'm like, man, cause what, what are you basing it on? Like, what is the underlying value, the collective agreement of everyone it's on, its, on, says its, it is, on right? its value, yeah. which is interesting because I don't know. I mean, I mean, is it putting, the value of currency in the hands of the of the people instead of backing it with gold or silver or whatever precious things that you know we we typically back we currencies to. With. well we 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 have fractionalized the the backing yeah. of it for sure but it's still at some level backed by something well governments hate it because well, they can't control it well they hate it but i mean like central banks i can't imagine that they would ever no, go for that. Well, there's attorneys now that will do a closing with crypto. Yeah, there, there are attorneys out there that'll do that. Um, the other thing is you got to be careful about which crypto currency you're using. You know, there's so many, everybody can just, anybody can invent one. What about this squid person? <laughs> the, 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 right? they, they scam people for like $2 million. Yeah. Three, 3.2. Three oh, yeah. it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it was over 3 million. Um, so what takeaway did you get from uh, free, free founders? Anything different than I got? Uh, you no, know, kind of the same thing. It's, you know, how do you, uh, you said disruptor and, you know, and I, I think the way I like, but like, how do you stand out or get a leg up in a market that is so easily diluted by huge players? Mm -hmm. Right. So how do you get, how do you differentiate yourself or what you're doing or create that, uh, that niche niche, if that's how you say it, uh, whatever, uh, <laughs> you know, how do you do that? Yeah. And, and being at these masterminds, learning from people who have tried different things, succeeded, failed, all those, like that it's, it's, that's a, that's a huge piece of it. And that's what you want to do is you want to mm -hmm. be in the room with people that have failed. Right. Oh, every person in that room <laughs> has failed. Yeah, that's every right. Every single person. That's right. Like, I would not pay to go to a room full of people who have never failed because they're not doing something right. Well, either, <laughs> either they're, they're, they're scamming that's right. everyone. They're not taking enough. Or they're risk. lying. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's just like that's what we talk about all the time when you know when we are lending, we we want a very small level of defaults. Because that lets us know that we're lending at the proper risk, at the proper risk level right. for we're what we're doing. Table if we don't. Exactly. exactly right. So you want to, you know, there has to be some failure. 
if there's no failure, there's never success. That's you know, exactly you, you right. You can't have you can't have one. Ask without Babe the other. Ruth, right? Mm -hmm. Babe Ruth. Babe can't Ruth. Speak. You well, can't we, speak. we have these little. Uh, what, what's interesting is we have these little hot seats that are. Mm -hmm. um, our, our, the Freedom Founders Mastermind is full of uh, a bunch of dentists, orthodontists, mm -hmm. private practice mm -hmm. physicians, and then people in the real estate business. And we typically gather uh, on one day with about. I don't know, five to six of us at a table. And, uh, you know, we try to figure out uh, what's holding you back right now. Mm -hmm. And then, so each person will go around and what's holding you back now. And then we'll discuss it and see if we can offer any assistance. And what's interesting is the same thing that's holding uh, a dentist <clears throat> back. It's the same thing as holding us back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all have the same problems. It's just in a different industry. Yeah. That's for true. sure. My, my favorite, uh, mastermind that I've ever been to was the trusted advisor mastermind that freedom founders did for those of us that are, that are in that trusted advisor group. And that was in January of was 2020. It 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and they, he, he put a newspaper down in front of us. If this was your company and this newspaper showed up in the morning saying that, you know, you've just lost 50% of your business. What are you going to do? We had to come up with how we were going to communicate to, to our, our customers, our clients. Um, who would we keep? Who would we let go? Would we hoard our cash? What kind of loans would we do? How would we change our programs? What are all the different changes that we would make? Yeah. And then two months later, what happened? Yeah. Well, and, and they, they didn't have a crystal ball. They didn't know what no. was going to happen. The thing was we had been in such a long bull market uh, that they knew like, something was like, coming. Hey, at some point things are going to change. <laughs> so let's put together a plan when, you know, when things do change yeah. and it just happened to be extremely timely. Yeah. yeah. It was something else because when, when COVID hit and everybody mm -hmm. got shut down overnight, pretty much, we were, we were like cool as cucumbers. Yeah. We really were. We were like, Hey, we, we got a plan. We never went a month without lending. Yeah. That's right. Nope. That's right. And we, we went by our plan too. We mm -hmm. did the things on our plan that we said we would do. And it, it, uh, she tried to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't do that. All right. We have, uh, five minutes left. Okay. And our, the, the actual theme of our show was women typically, cause this is still all about women month. <laughs> women typically in the household are the ones that handle finances but very few of them are the ones that are doing the investing yeah. uh, when it comes to, you know, retirement planning. What have to know the metrics are the women who are handling finance. Are they primarily? I don't have all the details, Jonathan. Well, I, I will say this. The, <laughs> I'm we, just asking, why do we think that is? There are a lot of female <laughs> widowed investors out there that do very well. No, I, I, Accredited I, I investors agree. that do very well. And, um, you know, we were trying to figure out why, well, you know what I think it is. What? I think that most people ask to speak to the husband. Well, that will ask the, but I was going to say most people just leave the decision-making of investing to their stockbroker or their, their That's financial a good point. manager. That's a good point. And it's, it's like, you know, Oh, you know, not that women don't play golf, but it's like, Oh, honey, did you go play golf with the financial manager? How are we doing? We're doing great. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, it's, it's, you know, I think maybe perhaps it's, oh, it's uh, the husband's taking care of it, but is he? Yeah. He's not. Yeah. Well, he's not doing if anything. he's smart, he's asking his wife what needs to be done. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, when I have an appointment with uh, somebody that wants to invest in our fund, mm -hmm. I, I want both spouses on the phone right. at the same time. Right. Because yeah. the wife I, always has I, questions. I, 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 they are typically the most detailed yes. and they ask the most detailed questions. Mm -hmm. yep. And the, and again, this is not a stereotype, but it uh, generally men tend to be big picture people and women yeah. tend to be more detailed. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a different level of, of risk tolerance to, for, you know, for everyone, you know, where, you know, typically I would say men have more of a predisposition to be risk takers right. than women do. But there, I know a lot of women who are, who are well, risk takers. Well, that's my household. Yeah, you're, my, you're my a risk taker. the security guy. Yeah. He likes, he likes. It's balance, right? You got to yeah. have one and yeah. the other. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, to speak to, you know, having the, you know, both spouses on the phone, 
one of the things that uh, impressed my wife the most was when we were we were talking about me joining you all here. Mm -hmm. The first thing that you asked was, "Hey, can you and your wife join us on the phone call?" You know, and so that's it's a very well, we really knew who was making that decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's because it's 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 the way that we like to do things yeah. here, and the way you all it's have always move. done things. Yeah, yeah. Um, we want to involve those, but when when everyone is in lockstep, when the spouses are in lockstep, mm -hmm. whether it's investing or new businesses or whatever the case may be, being in lockstep is a much better place to yeah. be. Yeah, life is much easier, folks. So if you're mm -hmm. not doing that, pick it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, look, we're at the bottom of the hour. That's right. Um, I, listen, it's been some great uh, content, I think. Um, of course you, guys, you do. <laughs> you guys may not think so. But, but, why did you but think, we liked it. Why did you think women weren't investing? A, a lot of the reasons that you say it's just, it's, <laughs> no, seriously. What I, you said. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to repeat anything. He's like, I don't want to get in hot water here. <laughs> I think we're out of time. <laughs> I'm sorry, this thing is not working. <laughs>